Jesus. Hey, friends. John Gregor Bear again here with The Truth Factor, where we discuss and explore finding who you are in God. And that's what I do here at The Truth Factor. All right? About a year ago, God woke me up in the middle of the night, gave me two words, Truth Factor. I began to pray about that. And I believe God has led me out and uh, wants me to share with everybody what I have learned in my relationship to the one true God. And that's what I do here at The Truth Factor. Uh, My primary motive and motivation is to share with you practical things that I have learned in my relationship to God the Father through Jesus Christ. Now, a little bit about myself. I share this on almost every video. I wasn't raised in the church. Uh, I was not really into organized religion. I'm, I'm really still not tremendously in, in, in uh, I don't want to speak negatively about it because uh, um, if it's done properly, it's a great way to stay plugged into God, connected with the Holy Spirit, and living for God each and every day through a good church. Now, there's no such thing as a perfect church, but um, that's why I don't want to knock the church. So, because there's a lot of good things happening in the church, but there's a lot of churches that are need to be waking up, and that's why maybe that's why I'm doing a lot of these videos. <clears throat> so, today I want to go in to do something a little different. I'm trying to re- get really focused. <clears throat> we just I just did a series for your just reference material. I did a uh, about 40 part series. I'm going to write a book called The Kingdom of God According to Me. And I did about 40 videos on what we learned was what is the kingdom of God? Where is the kingdom of God? When did the kingdom of God begin? And how do I take part in this kingdom? Now, part of those videos, the critical first step in understanding what the kingdom of God is, is you first need to understand who are God's people. And why do we call them God's people? And as you begin to understand that, you're going to be able to connect the dots to who the one true God is. And it's so critical to understanding who the Jewish people are. They come from the line of Abraham. And this is who God's people are. And there's a reason for it. And a lot of people think, well, God's prejudice, he doesn't love all, but no, that's it's not true. You gotta really get you might have to investigate a little bit and you'll find out that God loves the whole world. God loves all people because God is love. And that's why he wrote the Bible. The whole purpose of the Bible was to bring us back into right relationship to God. The Bible was written by holy men of God who were moved by the Holy Spirit. And it's through these authors, there was over 30, 40, I mean, I don't know the exact number, but there's over 66 books in here written by multiple different authors. And the book is complete and there's overlap within the book. And so that's why we can say it was written by God because it was written by holy men who were moved by the Holy Spirit. And that's why we can say it's written by God. Now, the, the, the word of God is complete. It, there's you don't add you don't need to add anything and don't take anything out of the books they're all complete and they and, they, and it, it really is the book the book is really it's the revelation of God to mankind it's God's message to mankind to get mankind back into right relationship to him because he loves us and God is love God is also a spirit and I share this with my past videos you're a spirit you possess a soul and you live in your body God is a spirit. God is holy. God is perfect. There is no sin in God. God is not part of this creation. He's above all this. He's the one true God who created it all. He's not part of it. He's set apart. That's what holiness means. Set apart. Okay. Now I encourage you. Uh, we're starting a new series here called the kingdom of God versus the matrix of lies. It's a new series I've started. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the whole purpose of the series is we are entering into the end times, okay? And I'm my whole point is we're entering into a duality, I would call it. <clears throat> and you need to make a decision what kingdom you want to be part of, okay? Because here's the bottom line. God's already made his choice. God has already presented his message it, your destiny, where you go, is all about what you choose. 
Now, I've shared this with my past videos. Be careful what you believe because what you believe determines your destiny, okay? God has already provided a way for mankind to come into relationship with him. That's why he wrote the Bible. It's the word of God. And that's why he provided a way through Jesus Christ, it's called the new covenant, for mankind to enter into back, back into right relationship with him, okay? <clears throat> so the way is there. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. The covenant is there. The question is, what are you going to do with that covenant? The Bible says, in the book of the prophets, it says, multitudes, multitudes are gathering in the valley of decision. Right now, people are gathering in the valley of decision. All of mankind is being gathered in the valley of decision. And this is the place where mankind needs to make a decision. What kingdom are you going to be part of? And that's why I'm doing this series on the kingdom of God versus the matrix of lies. Now, in part one, we talked about uh, a, a very special moment in history, and it was uh, God gave King Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, in 606 BC, God gave King Nebuchadnezzar a dream, and it startled him. It troubled him. <clears throat> and during this time, Nebuchadnezzar was so startled, he was trying to get his magicians and astrologers to give him the interpretation of the dream, and they, they couldn't. They didn't know what to do. <clears throat> so he's gonna, just going to kill him. So this man, this man named Daniel comes, and Daniel was a Jew from the line of Judah. And Daniel tells the king, king, don't be hasty. And so Daniel, with his uh, uh, other Jew uh, 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 colleagues, they get together and they pray. And, and through the prayer, and God, Daniel fasts and, fasts and seeks God. Through, God's, uh, through Daniel's prayer, God reveals the dream of Nebuchadnezzar. And then he also reveals the interpretation. And it's in this dream. In part one, I talked to you about this dream. And in this dream, God proclaims the history of mankind. He does it in 606 BC. He proclaims, first of all, all the kingdoms that would take place for the, for the next 2,600 years until the new era begins. So he proclaims all these kingdoms before they actually come into being. And this is how God proves that he's God. He proclaims the end from the beginning. <clears throat> so Daniel gives the dream to Nebuchadnezzar of what the dream is. And then he gives them the interpretation. And I talked to you about that in the kingdom of God versus the matrix of lies, part one. And, and the subtitle is called the spirits of the past and the future of mankind. Go check that out because that's where we are today. Where we are today is we're in the last kingdom. And the last kingdom is the feet of iron mixed with clay. It's called the revived Roman empire. And that's where we are today. That's what's going on in our government right now. That kingdom is, is trying to take control and, and trying to seize final control. And it's happening right now. Okay. So, and, and in that, in that first part, we also talked about the kingdom of God. God tells the future of mankind that this kingdom is going to destroy. He tells the end is he already knows the story. The, the future is already spoken. He destroys the image, the rock, the stone that's built without hands, destroys the image and destroys all the past kingdoms. And the kingdom of God will be established in the earth forever. Okay. So it's spoken. God spoke it into existence 2,600 years ago through, a, through, the, through the prophet Daniel. Okay. <clears throat> so in part, so that's what we talked about in part one. Now in part two, we talked about the kingdom of God versus the matrix of lies, part two, and it is the God, and this is where we are today, it's the God of Nimrod versus the God of Noah. So you got to make a choice what kingdom you want to be in. So are you going to serve the God of Noah or are you going to serve the God of Nimrod? Okay. Now the God of Nimrod, I'm going to just do the brief thing, was, was uh, we talked about in Genesis, I forgot where it was, 11, somewhere in there. It, one of those, we talked about, the God of Nimrod is a, he emulates the one true God, which is Lucifer. The, uh, uh, the it's the occult, the occult, and they follow the God of Nimrod is uh, he he is uh, he emulates the one true God. So he says things like, "Let us." You remember in in the book of Genesis, God says, "Let us make man 
in our image. So in the image of God made he man, male and female made he in the image of God. So, but but what Lucifer's kingdom does in the, the, the occult, they, uh, they say things like, let us go make brick. This is what he said. Uh, let us go build a tower. Let us go build a city. Let us make us a name in the earth. So this is the God of Nimrod. It's about what's going on where you can see the kingdom that is in the earth right now. See, right now, Nimrod is trying to establish his kingdom, and it's going to be the kingdom of the Antichrist. He's trying to position himself right now for the end times. And that's what's going on, and that's one of your choices you got to make. Are you going to go be part of that? Are you going to be part of Noah's God? And I talked to you about what Noah, how God spoke to Noah and told him what to do. We told him, okay, go lead the ark now. So go, Noah and his families and all the animals come out of the ark. And the first thing Noah does is he makes an, he builds an altar and he makes an offering to the Lord. And then as he, after he makes that offering to the Lord, God comes in and makes a covenant with Noah and he, and he, and he uh, uh, establishes certain things that are puts in place with, to Noah saying, look, you know, basically making an agreement with Noah, look, this covenant is a Noah covenant. And God, it, there's certain things that are going to take place to the end, and one of them is seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest, that principle, that phenomenon of planting seed in the earth and reaping a harvest, that's going to stay in effect all the way through, even through the tribulation. Okay? So, and God sets the rainbow. He, 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 he uh, The rainbow in the heavens to as a sign or a token of this covenant that God has with Noah, okay? So that's what we learned in the last one. Now, today we're going to get into part three, and it's called uh, uh, Come Out. It's called Be Ye Separate. Come out from among them and be ye separate, okay? And I'm going to go through some scriptures here in just a second, but I'm going to talk to you about it a little bit, and I'm going to talk to you about holiness, um, cause here's where we're headed. We're going to do, I'm going to do a message. I don't know what part it's going to be, but basically this, this is where we're headed in Noah's kingdom and God's kingdom. We receive the spirit of God in our bodies. We receive the spirit of God by faith, by believing in Jesus Christ. First, by repenting, turning from our sin and turning to Jesus Christ and seeking God through worship and praise and through worshiping of God and through our prayer life, we are seeking the Spirit of God and we receive the Spirit of God in our bodies. Now, the kingdom of Nimrod is where, where they're headed. Eventually, they're gonna, people are going to be asked to receive the mark of the beast and they're going to receive the technology of Nimrod in their bodies. Okay, so this is why I want you to be clear about what's going to happen. This is, this is all written in the scriptures. It's all in the scriptures. The book of Revelation talks about receiving the mark of the beast. And, and it's going to be a chip. So it's going to be some kind of chip. Our technology is already there right now. And people are going to ask to receive a chip in their bodies. And it's going to be your choice. Okay? Multitudes, multitudes are gathering in the valley of decision. So you're going to have to make a choice. And I'm encouraging today, seek God. When I tell you this, I'm going to keep telling it over to you. It's not God's choice. God, God already made a way. God proclaimed the future over 2,600 years ago. And over 2,000 years ago, God provided Jesus, the Messiah of Israel, to come to the earth to save God's people from their sin. Jesus is the Savior of the world. He's the light to the Gentiles. And there's one Savior between God, there's one Savior for all mankind, and it is the Lord Jesus Christ. There's one mediator between God and man. It is the man, Christ Jesus. There is one uh, rabbi, a uh, true rabbi, between God and man, and it is the man, Christ Jesus. There is one high priest between God and man, and it is the high priest, Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, Okay. So Jesus, and I share with in my past videos, your relationship to God is found and discovered and revealed in your relationship to the man, Jesus Christ. And as you read the word of God, you're going to hear the teachings of Jesus Christ. And as you believe on Jesus Christ, God is going to reveal himself to you. And he will do that through faith. As you exercise your faith. And as you believe in Jesus and you keep drawing, taking those steps of faith to Jesus, steps of faith to Jesus. And as you seek your relationship to God, as you seek your spiritual life in Christ Jesus, 
God is going to reveal to you who he is and the plans that he has for your life. Because why? You need Jesus for two reasons. One is you first need to be forgiven for your sin. The Bible teaches this without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. So you got to be forgiven. That's the first step. And as you receive Jesus, God forgives you for your sin. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. Jesus's blood was shed for your sin. When Jesus saved me, he told me, I'm taking your sin from you. When you receive Jesus and believe in Jesus, Jesus will take your sin from you, just as he did for me. John said this in the, in the River Jordan, behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. That's why Jesus came to take away your sin. And that's what he'll do for you if you believe on him. But you first need to take a step of faith. You need to repent. You need to turn. Jesus talked about this when he brought the kingdom of God to the earth. John and Jesus taught, repent for the kingdom of God is here. And that's what I'm telling you today. You need to repent. You need to turn from your way of thinking, turn from your way of seeing the world, Turn from your way of believing things and turn and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you come and begin to learn who Jesus is, your life is going to change. You're going to discover new life in Christ Jesus as you take your step of faith to, to God the Father through Jesus Christ. Okay, So you need Jesus for the forgiveness of sin. Number two, you need Jesus because God speaks to his people by revelation. You need Jesus because you need God to speak to you. And if the Bible teaches this, he that hath the son has life. He that hath not the son has not the life. And that life is the life of God. If you have the son of God in you and you believe on Jesus, you have received Jesus. The life of God is in you. It comes in you. You're born again to the things of God. So God will reveal to you who he is by his spirit. The Holy Spirit reveals who he is through believing in Jesus Christ and receiving Jesus Christ. So you need Jesus for two reasons. One, to be forgiven of your sin. Two, so you can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you And God, because God speaks to his people by revelation. Now today we're going to talk about uh, be ye separate. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Now Paul uh, wrote a letter to the Corinthians, uh, and, and this was right back when the church was beginning, and Paul was preaching the gospel to the Gentiles. He was in Greece, and he was in a city called C Corinth, and Corinth was a very, very sinful place. It was probably something like equivalent to like Las Vegas. It was a really sinful place. There was prostitution and all kind of stuff going on, and the but the church was growing, and uh, there were miracles going on, and Paul was preaching the gospel, and he had a lot of challenges. There was there was pr uh, there were Christians there that were have uh, uh, engaged with prostitutes, and and they were thinking that it was okay. And Paul had to write a letter to him, going, "No, no, 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 no." And I believe it's very appropriate today today's time. People are living in sin. Sin is all over, and um, and and this is what today's message is: come out from among them and be ye separate. Now. We're going to start off, I'm going to talk to you about, uh, I'm going to read the scripture to you, and then we're going to uh, uh, talk about some points. Father, let's start with a prayer. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I ask you to speak to everyone hearing my voice, Lord. Show them, show them the time that we're living in, Lord. Help them understand what they need to do to draw near to you so that they can find who you are. They can find their place in you. That they don't, the ones who don't want to go to the Antichrist kingdom, Lord, help them understand clearly, Lord, the steps they need to take to come into right relationship with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you for the word of God. Now, I encourage you to go check out my video, Being Born Again. It's a 16-minute video, and it takes you through the steps that you can take if you want to come to know who this Jesus is. All right? You must be born again, Jesus taught. Okay, 2 Corinthians 6, 15 through 18. And here we go. And Paul writes this to the Corinthians. He says, And what harmony has Christ with Satan? Or what part has he that believes with he that doesn't believe? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of God. You are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, 
and be ye separate, says the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So God says, come out from among the culture. Come out from among, you, if you want, the apostate church. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Okay? Now, let's go into uh, the unclean thing. It, it's talked about in Isaiah 52, 11, And this was back before Jesus. And the, and the prophet Isaiah wrote about the unclean thing. And here's what uh, Isaiah says in 52, 11. He says, uh, this is uh, awake. He's speaking to Jerusalem. He says, depart you, depart you, go you out from there. Touch not the unclean thing. Go you out of the midst of her. Be you clean, you that bear the vessels of the Lord. So God is a call. When God calls his people, and I encourage you to go check out my, my video on the kingdom of God, where we talk about what is the kingdom of God. There's a theme that God uses throughout all of history, and it's simply this. God always calls out his people from among the culture to himself, to holiness. God, all, God called Noah out from the people and to go build an ark. Okay, God called Abraham out of ancient Babylon and brought him into a new place. And God proclaimed that he would have the land of Israel. So God called Abraham out of Babylon. Now we go further and the children of Israel go into Egypt and become slaves. Then God calls out Israel from ancient Egypt to the mountain of God where God gives a new covenant. Okay, so he's calling people out and that's what he's saying. Come out from among them and don't touch the unclean thing. So your journey, if you want to get to know who the one true God is, is going to be a journey where you're called out of this world, okay, into God, into a relationship to God. God, when Jesus comes proclaiming the kingdom of God, Jesus is proclaiming the kingdom of God, saying, repent and uh, uh, for the kingdom of God is at hand. So God, call, and God calls out his church to himself. And actually, if you look up the word in Greek, the word for church is ecclesia. Well, I forgot what it is. But anyway, it's ecclesia, something like that. But that word means literally a people called out of the world to God, a relationship to God. And that's what the church is. Jesus said this, upon this rock, Shall I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it? He's talking about the rock of the revelation of who Jesus Christ is, that Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And as you believe in Jesus, you're going to discover that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah of Israel, the son of the living God. And it's that revelation that God will build his church. Okay, so God is calling you out. Of, and don't touch the unclean thing, but come, come out of the, the culture and come unto him. Now let's go look what else he says, in, uh, the, the prophets say in Ezekiel 20, 34. Ezekiel is uh, another prophet and he's talking um, and we're going to talk to you about calling. Here it is again, 34. And I will bring you out from the people and I will gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. So God's telling Israel uh, at the appropriate time, he's going to bring God's people back out. He's going to, he's, he's, he said, I will bring you out from among the people. So if you want a relationship to the one true God or the God of Noah, you need to come out from among the, the way of the world. And you need to begin to seek God and, 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 and learn of who this Jesus is so that you can be renewed each and every day in your relationship to God. And this, this, this process is called sanctification. It's a call to holiness. Okay. Now let's go to Ezekiel 30 verse 41. And he says, I will accept you with your sweet savor when I bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein you have been scattered, and I will be sanctified in you before the nations. So when you receive Jesus, God is going to be sanctified in you. So you're going to be called out of the world unto a relationship to Jesus Christ, okay? Now, I want you to go to, we're going to go to James 4.4, 4, and this is the last scripture we're going to share, and, and, and this is just kind of puts a, a period on the sentence 
uh, that, that God, you are called out of this world. If you want a relationship to the God of Noah, to the God of Jesus Christ, you cannot uh, uh, put your affections on the things of this world, okay? I mean, you know, you're, if you're young, you don't, don't feel bad about it, but the call is to come out from among the, the world and to, into your relationship to God. Your relationship to God has got to be the most important thing. If you, if you want to get to know who this one true God is. Okay. And so, so James says this. Now, James is, uh, Jesus' br- brother and he, he wrote the, the letter of, uh, the epistle of James. And it's a really kind of a, uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a letter based in faith. And I talk about faith a lot here, but here, here's what he says. He says, you adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that the, that friendship with the world is an enemy to God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of this world is an enemy to God. So you got to draw the Jesus said, Jesus said this. He said, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. See, Jesus creates division and um, it creates division. It will create division in your life. But there's but but what you're going to find in your relationship to God. And this is what I tr- teach at the truth factor is you're going to find freedom. You're going to find forgiveness. You're going to find the gift of eternal life. And that's really, what else can you want in life is the way I see it. I didn't, I wasn't raised in the church, but when I got born again, I tell you, it was the best day of my life. I was set free. I was set free and I had a love. I learned, I learned how to love God and I learned how to love people. And uh, before that, I didn't know anything about love. And so in your relationship to God, and that's just a testimony that God is love. That's who God is. So if you want love in your life, you're going to need to place God as number one in your life. And if you will begin to seek God with all your heart, the Bible teaches this, seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and then everything else in life will be added to you. When you put your affections on God first and you begin to seek God, let me tell you, your life is going to change. Your life will change. But most people, and a lot of people are in the church, are double-minded. Their, their affections are mixed. They're with the world and with God. See, I guess it's just I'm just fortunate. I'm an all-or-nothing person. I'm either all one way or I'm all the other way. If I'm going to be in sin, just I'm going in sin. If I'm going to be in God, I'm going to go all for God. I'm not going to. I'm not going to mix. I'm not going to put my foot in both worlds. Even though I, I'm not telling you I don't wrestle with sin. We all deal with sin, and and sin's just part of being human. We're all sinners, and uh, um, and so that's just part of being human. But what I'm getting at if, is this: if you will seek God with all your heart, see Jesus taught this. Hero Israel. And some guy asked Jesus, says Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? And Jesus said this, Hear, O Israel, this is the greatest commandment. Hear, O Israel, the Lord God is one. You shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, and with all your mind. And then you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You see, this is the greatest commandment because it's love. It means God's saying the greatest commandment is to love God. And we love God by what we by what we do, but we literally, when you go look up that word love, what it really means is set your affections on. When you set your affections on God, then you are loving God. But if you're not loving God, you're not setting your affections on God, I really question whether you love God. And this is where worship comes in. And I go, go watch my video on being born again. This is where you're going to find how to love, how to love God by worship. And, and that's why I encourage you in that video on being born again to go find a church where they worship Jesus. And if you'll begin to get into that environment, the Holy Spirit is going to be able to speak to you and you're going to be able to respond to the Spirit of God and you will be born again if you respond to the word, uh, to the Spirit of God. And that's when you become born again, like I did. The Spirit of God came to me, I responded, and I was born again into the family of God. And he'll do the same thing for you. See, God is love. And if you want love in your life, then you need God in your life, okay? So I'm going to wrap it up. Today's message was come out from among them, be ye separate. And you're going to find that in a life of holiness 
will begin to take root in your life as you seek God. All right, this is John Gregor Bear for the Truth Factor signing off. I'm encouraging you, open your mind to the ways of God, open your heart to the love of God, and you just might be surprised. Catch you on the next video.